Surprise! I was going to go, ah! But I didn't think you would laugh because Halloween's over. Candy's not over. But the trick of treating, scaring people, the season now has passed. So, welcome to another Five with Father. We're going to change the name to Eight with Father. One, because the time limit of five minutes is way too short for me. And usually we have a lot of stuff going on and we pass up five and we usually end up having like six or seven or eight things to talk about. Plus, it is the past tense of my favorite thing to do. Got it. Eat. He ate. We eat. Get it? Ate with father. I ate with father. Bad joke. So, five with father, eight with father, here we go. Thanksgiving food drive. So, we're trying to do a food collection for people in our community who will not or may not celebrate the holiday of giving thanks the way most of us do. Uh, there are some people who are very limited on the amount of food or the type of food that they can purchase for the Thanksgiving celebration. So this is a way that we can help out in doing food donations, volunteering, or even giving a gift card or uh, uh, some financial help to those who are less fortunate. So remember the Native Americans and the pilgrims and the coming together and sharing and giving thanks for the bounty that God gives. This is a way that we can do that and give thanks for the bounty that God has given to us. Uh, as you can see, there's already food in the donation collection basket, but we have an opportunity not only to fill this up, but to be able to support and uh, help 100 families with a Thanksgiving dinner meal. That's the turkey, the stuffing, potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, green beans or vegetables, uh, bread, and all the rest of that stuff that goes along with it. These are the things that we're collecting. All of this stuff. We even have like a shopping list if you're interested. So all of these things can happen, including the turkey, uh, for a family to have a wonderful Thanksgiving meal. So as we're giving God thanks for all the things that, and blessings that he has put into our lives, this is a way of giving thanks for all that he has done for us. Speaking about giving, we are looking for 25, family, 25 groups or people to support the uh, goal of 45 adoptive families for Christmas. So if you or a group of people or even uh, a church ministry wanna to get together and provide Christmas for a family, we can adopt a family and have Christmas for them, buying gifts, uh, writing notes, giving cards, and making the Christmas celebration for, uh, again, less fortunate people to be an outstanding, fantastic, and wonderful celebration. I remember a family from last year, they were asking for boots and shoes and uh, clothing, but never wanted a toy for the kids because Christmas has always been for them getting something that they needed and not something that they wanted. So we kind of put some things together because of their ages and allowed the kids to have something that they could play with and enjoy. Uh, it was a welcome surprise and a wonderful way to celebrate Christmas with someone who didn't even have the same perspective that we have on Christmas that a lot of us, I should say, have on Christmas. That Christmas giving for us is a very special thing because we get to imitate Jesus who was a gift to all of us, the whole world, for our salvation and the salvation of the world. And it's a pretty remarkable thing to be able to give a small gift and again, giving thanks for all that God has done. We also will have the giving trees going up pretty soon that we can buy the things necessary for a lot of the uh, support in our community and around Cleveland 
um, Providence House, Westside Catholic Center, Herman's House of Hospitality, and a lot of these ministries like Birthright, uh, Womankind, Woman Safe, they need things to help support their ministry to people throughout the year. So we have an opportunity to help them help others. And the Giving Tree, Adopt a Family, the Thanksgiving Food Collection, these are ways that we can help. These are ways we can be active in our faith. Speaking about faith, first Friday adoration, 930 to 3. And we would like for you to sign up for an hour right over in front of the chapel. There's a sign up board where you can sign up on the sheet to take an hour of your day worshiping God, celebrating his gift of the Eucharist, and just giving him thanks and asking him what does he want from you, from me, from us. Um, and how can we best serve him? So we start in prayer, do an hour of adoration, uh, and go out and get active in doing what God has given us to do. First Saturday devotion. We'll start with Mass in the chapel, 9 o'clock Mass, and then the rosary to follow. In the nursery, uh, if you bring your children, there will be someone in the nursery that they can uh, hang out with, pray a child-friendly rosary, have a snack, have an activity. And so they, while you're um, offering the devotion of the Mass and maybe the rosary upstairs, your kids could be downstairs uh, gathered together with a, a bunch of other kids from Holy Angels or from our area and pray, play, and have uh, a, a good, fun, safe time in the nursery downstairs. Guess who's coming to see us? Nope. Nope. One more guess. You got it. Bishop Michael Woos is coming to our church November 7th at 7 p.m. to share with us something on the Eucharist. He's sharing with us, talking with us about the gift of the Eucharist and how it pertains to our life and our activity. So 7 p.m., Bishop Woos will come in and give a talk, and then we'll have some light refreshments and some light discussion afterward and we're inviting you to invite your friends to uh, listen to the bishop Michael Woos uh, in our church talking about the Eucharist and we can grow together learn something together and have a better understanding of what we're celebrating in there November 10th and 11th we are going to have our first ever Christmas boutique where you can see some of the artists in the community in our parish display some of their art but we'll also have a time an opportunity to purchase some items from people who want to sell things crafts art uh, food bread bakery and some other things that we can all participate in not only supporting their craft but in providing for uh, a gift for someone, even ourselves, uh, of what they've created. There will also be a display of, of putting your hands on clay uh, from, so that you can make your own pottery. So we'll have that opportunity to uh, participate in doing pottery if you have the inkling to do so making things with clay and seeing the display of other people's artwork, their photography, their paintings, drawings. It'll be a fantastic opportunity. We have a little over 20 people or 20 booths to have displayed items for sale and for show um, downstairs in the community room. Come join in the fun. Friday, five until nine, Saturday, nine until two, and see what art artisans we have in our parish and the fantastic things that 
were able to participate in. Come check it out. Some light refreshments will be available and lots of stuff for sale. Christmas Boutique, November 10th and 11th. Check it out. November 14th, Liturgical Minister's Evening of Reflection. So on the 14th from 6.30 to 7.30, we are inviting all who are interested in being liturgical ministers and all current liturgical ministers to come for an evening of reflection, desserts, and conversation so that we can continue to grow this ministry of serving each other uh, throughout the celebration of the Mass. So if you want to be a Mass coordinator, a lector, Eucharistic minister, an usher, server, this would be a thing to, to come in, get some information, participate, and get to know some of the other people in the ministry. If you're already one of those ministers, spend some time and just review, discuss, and reflect on the gift that God has given you that you're sharing with everyone else at Mass. Being a, 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 a liturgical minister is a fabulous thing to do for everybody involved. Whether you're proclaiming God's Word or celebrating the gift of the Eucharist with our brothers and sisters, there's always something that we can do to make our celebration better. All you need to do is come, say you're interested, and participate. We're looking for more ministers so that we can have a cup at every Mass. We can celebrate the blood of Jesus at every Mass, along with the, the uh, host. But we can also do all those other things, and we can all take a part and participate in something of the Mass, whether it's the celebration of the Eucharist, the celebration of the Word, or the celebration all together. We need people from greeters as they walk in the door to everything else that goes on in the celebration of Mass, and people to make those who aren't regulars in our parish or that may be visiting, that they feel welcome also. So we turn five with Father into eight with Father, and we've already gone 14 minutes. So I have two jokes for you today that were given to me. I thought they were pretty funny, and they fit right in line with all the jokes that I've said so far. So why do seagulls fly over the sea? if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. You know that's what I like that one. Because that's beautiful food. Bagels. Bagels. Still not laughing. Okay. So, why did Grandpa stop going to the gym? Because it wasn't working out for him. But it is kind of my kind of joke, though, right? That was funny. It wasn't working out. <laughs> so that's Five with Father. I hope you have a fantastic week, a beautiful day, and I'll see you in church. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.